recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank all of you for being here. This is a very important hearing, but I have to admit that it is somewhat ironic that here we have a hearing on how to promote energy security and cut energy bills at a time when we have a lack of energy security and we have record high energy prices directly as a result of the policy of this administration, of the Biden administration. That, that, that's just uh, some irony that I find here. Mr. Schreier, I'm, I'm very glad that we've got you here today. I appreciate you being here. You were with the American Public Gas Association. And, you know, gas is extremely important. It's a, it's a reliable energy to power our, it gives us reliable energy to power our economy. And, you know, and we, we really need natural gas well into the future. I, I want to share a story with you. I'm a member of the Conservative Climate Caucus. And about a month ago, we were over in Europe and in Brussels, and then we went up to Sweden. And we had an opportunity to meet with the leaders over there about what they're trying to do with renewables. The unfortunate thing that we found there is that the innovation is not keeping up with the public policy there. They have already set in place uh, the process of closing down nuclear plants, and some of them are already closed, and, and yet they can't provide for, for their energy needs with, with the renewables at this point. Now, hopefully they will in the future, and I hope we will here in this country in the future. But we can't right now. And we look at natural gas, and, and before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, what we saw was the you know, Nord Stream 2, where they were going to be getting natural gas from Russia to Germany and, and all throughout Europe. And yet that's dirtier natural gas than what we have here in America. We have some of the cleanest natural gas, and we have an abundance of it. And I, I, I share another story with you, and that is that in my district, We've had an LNG plant that has converted from an import plant to a export plant at um, Elba Island in, in Chatham County in Savannah, and, and that's the kind of that that's the kind of progress that we need to have, and that we need the direction that we need to be moving. And I'm I'm very convinced of that. Um, you know, I want to when we talk about when we talk about gas and natural gas. The direct use of natural gas in homes is 97% efficient and, and is almost universally cheaper than electricity. That, and that's significant again. And in Georgia, we've experienced that. I know in some areas of this country, such as uh, San Francisco, Seattle, New York, that they've, they've actually stopped using natural gas and prohibited it from using it. We've done just the opposite in Georgia. In fact, we've had... Um, We've had the state of Georgia and our legislature actually prohibited local governments from banning natural gas or any other type of like of energy. And I, I think that's the right move, and I'm very proud. And and it's because of our use of natural gas in the state of Georgia that that we've been able for I believe it's seven years in a row now been the most business friendly state in the nation. And and it's and it's because we have low energy costs. Because we utilize natural gas. Let me ask you, Mr. Schreier, as I just mentioned, gas is very important to the state of Georgia. How is the push for electrification impacting your members in my state? Thank you for the question. Uh, gas is very important in the state of Georgia. And as I mentioned earlier, it's fueling an industrial growth that you just talked about, uh, which is great for the state. Uh, the Municipal Gas Authority of Georgia is one of our members, and they're very involved in that effort. Um, when you talk about electrification, one thing to keep in mind is uh, right now natural gas is actually the largest source of electricity generation. It's 40 percent. Renewables are about 20 percent. And certainly renewables are going to grow, and, and they should grow. But at the end of the day, when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, that generation is going to be, is going to be backed up by natural gas generation. So our, our view is, isn't it a lot more efficient to use that natural gas directly? As we talked about, it's over 90% efficient from the time you take it out of the ground and get it to the burner chip. You're only losing 10% of that efficiency. With electricity, you're losing two thirds of that efficiency when you take the natural gas out of the ground, get it to the generation plant, get it over the transmission line, the distribution line, and to the electric appliance. You're losing two thirds of that efficiency. Our view is it's just more efficient to use it directly. 
I, I'm almost out of time, Mr. Schreier, but I would be remiss if I did not mention, and, and it'll probably come as a surprise to my fellow members and my colleagues here on the committee, but Georgia being the number one forestry state in the country, not only do we use natural gas, but those forests serve as a carbon sink. So if you look at the full cycle, then you see that we are carbon neutral when we're using carbon, natural gas. And uh, with that new information that I have submitted to this committee, I yield back. Rep. Naguz, you are up now. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Colorado's forests take great umbrage at uh, <laughs> championing of the Georgia forest.